right, so yeah, I'm Andreas Robinson, I'm a fourth year student here at SMU, doing another major in entrepreneurship and marketing. So my company is Business Academy, so I've been working on it for the last seven years. Uh, it's officially been a business for three years, and basically what that what it looks like, our mission is to empower individuals and communities to embrace their minimum potential. So whatever your passion is, whatever uh, you know, your dreams, your goals, kind of vision, basically solidifying that so that enabling persons to get skills based on identity, resilience, and leadership, and entrepreneurship, and integrating that so they can figure out how to turn their passions and make some money. So basically, there's two parts of the company. One side is events, the other part is training and development. So training and development takes part of curriculum development, facilitation, consulting, things like that. Um, and the events range from one-on-one -on -one to one-on-two -on hundred. So last fall, we actually did the transition to summer school. So all the incoming commerce students, there's about 200 of them, we transitioned them into the business school, basically focusing on intercultural leadership, resilience, and those aspects. So basically with the company, we're in public schools, private schools, all the way from elementary up to university. Now we're doing some work in the prisons as well, but our focus, like I said, is on those transitional periods. So when everything is this digital age and tech, right, periods of change, things are constantly changing. And so if you don't have social and emotional awareness, or you don't have an emotional intelligence, if you're not self-aware, you don't know how to deal with certain situations, it's pretty difficult to succeed, right? So stress or anxiety or other things, right? And so for me, what I found is that the disconnect between anyone that's successful in whatever context that is and someone who's not is the level of, you know, their foundation initially and the level of support that they have as they go through peer to transition. So going from junior high to high school, that's a peer to transition, right? Moving, that's a peer to transition. Leaving university and trying to get into the world, here to transition, right? So if you don't have support, if you don't have role models or mentors, and you're not self-aware, it's pretty difficult to go through those transitions. <coughs> Is that fair? Right? So and I know all of you in your own experiences um, can relate to that. Right? So it's going to be different. So for us as a company, that's really what we focus on. Um, going in and running programming that really empowers persons so it has to be tangible, right? So scaling is really the big part for myself. And that's kind of why I asked you a question earlier about what your balance was, because for myself as well, like my focus for the last two years has been infrastructure in the company. So what I mean by that is creating more processes for Infinitus, so that way as I graduate, I can focus more on just having contracts instead of chasing people around, kind of like we were talking about, right? So initially, what we were doing is having to go to the schools or reaching out to teachers and things like that to try to run some events. So, you know, for example, the school, Halifax Grammar School, brought us in to work with all their grade 10s leading into their uh, exam period. But then another school, an inner city school, brought us in to talk to their grade nines about their science and mental health. So very similar topics, but it was very different because we had to talk about the pressures that they were feeling at home. Versus at grammar, we were talking more so about time management, stress management, and kind of preparation for midterms and exams. Right, so everything we do is tailored specifically to meet what the needs are for the group. Um, and so as we're going through it, Things are really picking up because coming home from Jamaica, where I spent the last three months, my focus has shifted a lot more from just kind of being on the ground and trying to, as I said, go one on one to schools and try to engage with them, get into work with grade nines, and those things to scaling me up to the whole schools. So this past week, actually, uh, we were in three different schools and we brought in a guest speaker. So he's Canadian, he was raised by immigrants from Syria, and he's currently a DJ and an entrepreneur. So he has a business and he's in Las Vegas. I go, you know what, it's it business for class. So we brought him in because he's doing a cross Canada tour. And we brought him in to talk to three different junior highs uh, about resilience, intentional hustle, and trying to figure out who you are. Right? Because it's very important across the board, right? whether you're in commerce or in arts or those kind of things, to start asking a lot of curious questions. Right? Asking questions, taking risks, trying to do all these things, especially in university. Right? Because once you go into the real world, or once you go past that transition, right, there's a lot of things that are happening going on. And if you're not grounded, and you start to have a family or all that other stuff, life can kind of spiral, right? So my mission in that sense, right, is to bridge the gap and really bridge the disconnect, not just amongst youth, but amongst youth and each other, youth in their communities, and most specifically, youth in industry. So for example, if you're an immigrant, or you're someone that's in a very rural location, or you're in an urban place, and there's no one in your sphere or in your circle that you can reach out to. For example, if you're passionate about photography or you're passionate about tech, but you don't know anyone in your sphere that does those things. Having the ability to reach out and interact with those people 
and actually can engage with people in industry or people on campus at the different levels. So what we do for that, bringing in speakers, but also pairing with university students and high school students to focus on that peer-based learning to create an atmosphere where students can open up about some of the things that are going on in their home, where students can explore some of the passions that they have in a safe space. You know, an opportunity for teachers to actually learn more about their students. And that's really one piece that I'm really focusing on, as I said, on scale. Because after I graduate, I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing now, which is consulting, kind of integrating that more into the company, branding, brand videos, multimedia things as well. Uh, so it's kind of a wide range, but uh, it's kind of a snapshot of who I am and my company. I'm more so kind of the conversation style, so I'll open up to questions and maybe that will help you out. So you, you mentioned that you have two different so have consultant side as well as like the event management side. Yep. Which, like as Andreas yourself, which, is, which side are you more passionate about? Which side am I more passionate about? It's kind of a, it's kind of a balance of both to be honest. So that's why I said I'm focusing on scaling. So for me, it's figuring out, using the last two years to really figure out where are we making money? You know, where, what can we do things instead of working with you know, groups of 10 or 20? I'd much rather move so 50 to 100, 200, 300, stuff like that, right? So more into the consulting, I'd say it's, instead of doing one or the other, I'm definitely passionate about both, but it's figuring out what I can fit into the schedule, right? So it makes sense, because last week went in three full schools. So grade seven, grade eight, grade nine, all in there. And so I had to run programming, and then we had another speaker. So that to me is awesome, but again, I can do more of kind of full scale things than I can do going to a school do one-on-one. -on -one. Right, it takes a lot more time and you know, passionate about it as well. And similarly to what you said, as you kind of grow and scale, you got to do things more to scale and then kind of add more persons to the company. We're right. expanding this year as well and kind of take care of some of the balance of the So Any other questions? So where do you see it going three, five years from? Three to five years. Um, basically, the plan is why I'm pushing myself now because coming back from Jamaica, uh, there's a lot of partnership opportunities that I had down there. So, three years, I'm going to plan to get down there. I have a proposal that I'm waiting on to hear. Um, so, ideally, it'll be in Jamaica, uh, across the country as well. So I'm waiting for some other things to open up in the States. But the plan three to five years is definitely across North America and into Jamaica. Is there a question? Uh, so I hear you talk about uh, part of your journey or part of your goal is to help uh, people to find themselves and find who they are and stuff. So through all your experience uh, coming from your struggles as a student and so forth, uh, moving forward as a vision for the company itself. Because um, I, I hear some stuff about consulting, some yep. stuff about teaching. Yep. So uh, what would be your Ultimate, uh, in, in this so what's, what's the vision? Yeah. So yeah, I guess the question is kind of what's the vision doing a lot of these things and juggling stuff. So um, basically, I'll say the 35-year vision in that sense is to engage and impact a billion persons um, and make a hundred million dollars annually in revenue. Be the big vision. Um, so scaling it up obviously looks like you know, having different bases across. Um, you know, obviously in Canada, the States, and the Caribbean. Um, it's scaling up more so because obviously kind of the engagement or the empowerment aspect is a big part. Um, but I think overall, I guess the vision is, is getting to that point, getting in so that it's not so much. Well, I answer like this. So one part is getting in and integrating the fitness curriculum as part of the education system, um, through partnering with institutions and things like that. The other aspect is continuing with consulting, so the other corporate side, companies, things like that. Um, but doing that at scale, so being in a position where we can go in and deal with change management. So we have incoming persons from university, just transitioning them, transitioning them into your company, where you have kind of things like that. So that's kind of the vision. Any other questions before I hop off? kind of a matter of things coming together. So I'm from here, but I actually went to high school in the States. So because of that, uh, I wasn't really able to, you know, fund my business or kind of do those kind of interactions.
actions. So basically, where I started seven years ago, um, you know, I had the opportunity to go to prep school, which historically is, is the feeder for Harvard, and our rival is the feeder for, feeder for Yale. So their curriculum, the whole style, and, and sphere of that, you know, that uh, culture, but the school is very different, right? So it's a big class, there's 12 students, and there's people from all around the world. So everyone looked like Smith, very diverse, and you actually have conversations with people. You know, people from Nigeria, people from Ghana, all over the country, and all over Asia. Right, so it should be my perspective, but it also showed me because persons at that school were from a whole range of socioeconomic backgrounds, while at the same time they had the support. Right, so from grade nine to twelve, and you know, for post grad, you know, students would go there. And I remember going into his tenth year over the summer between grade nine and grade ten. A student, you know, did an internship with Microsoft, and he already built his own computer. And from Microsoft, they did Xbox 360. And all this stuff. And I was like, yo, you're not even in grade 10 yet. That's ridiculous, right? But I know so many people that are interested in technology or are interested in these things, but they don't have the support the support for the role models. So for me, that was kind of a shifting point. And I wanted to make sure that I was active. And I wanted to play an active role in that. So for me, seven years ago was when I was living in my home. So I was focusing more on business during like March break or trips back. And then three years ago, was kind of like a transfer to here focus more on the business and industry to focus on kind of entrepreneurship and marketing and developing the professional side of my portfolio. So that was the, the push in that sense. Kind of shift gears and get into the business. Uh, so for me, I guess that was a transition, but uh, I think the, the second part of your question was just like, how did I deal with the transition? Starting it up? Yeah, it was a lot. So when I first transferred back in here, I was playing on the football team, I was running the business, and I was in school. Um, so it was definitely a lot to take on, and I was running myself, like, learning from both ends. So 100% was a lot. But I mean, as anyone that is interested in business or has any entrepreneurial stuff, like, that's part of the process, kind of burning out. Not to the full extent, but um, definitely a lot of juggling, um, kind of figuring out what my priorities were. Um, the self care definitely went down. Um, that was a big issue, and one of the things that was actually recently really stepped away from football to focus on the business and have more self care. Um, but for me, I think it was really just figuring out what I was interested in, figuring out how to make it happen. Um, as is the case with any business, I know we mentioned earlier, any good idea you need some money for funding, but um, it's not so much money, but it's access. Whether it's access to resources, access to mentors, access to those things. And that's kind of what I was saying. You know, we want to ask questions, we want to be curious, we want to take risks and do those things. Like as many times as you can. Right? Because the more people you know, the better access you're going to have to resources or whatever the case is. Right? So for me, my time at St. Mary's has been more about networking and those things. Because that's really what university is for. Um, I mean, you know, you have classes and all stuff, but really it's who you're going to meet at university, what professors you'll know, um, who you're going to meet at the entrepreneurship center, um, who you're going to meet around campus. Uh, because networks, which is really what my idea was, you know, the, the prep school I went to said, this is going to be the, the most uh, enriching and empowering experience you have, regardless of what university you go to, because of the network you'll have when you graduate. Right? So that's a, that's a big thing um, to be successful in whatever you want to do. Um, Definitely challenge yourself to increase your network and just connect and meet people. So for me, that's what I spent my time in university doing. Um, challenge myself, I guess, but uh, that's kind of my process. If I answered your question. Do you have balance? I yes. In the I guess to your point, in the entrepreneur, not in the traditional sense. I think everyone has a balance uh, on their own equilibrium. It's not the work-life balance you work for, you can only rest four hours. Um, but I definitely have a balance, and I think stepping away from football for me, I'll be fine that more so. Um, but I definitely push myself as hard as I can until I crash and then take a break and then keep going back at it. Um, but I have, I think I definitely have a routine. Um, yeah, more, definitely a lot of work and play, but more work for right now because I have a you know, longer-term vision. So I'll wait on the clubs because I'd rather own one and go check it out and have a face on the other game. So you said that you were know, three, three sessions last year. Yeah. So how would you say, what would you say is like the most difficult thing about getting a customer? So like for the event side? Or so, more so, I'd say the consulting. So, 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 so
So consulting is a little different. Oh, I just have a So consulting, I, I, I think, in anything, is, again, goes back to who you know. Everything is, is definitely who you know. Uh, consulting very much so. So where I started consulting is with the government. And so very much so that's closed door type of deal. So it's kind of you have to know people and kind of get invited to the table in that sense. Um, but I think consulting where we're getting for events, it's kind of much like what we said earlier, right? You kind of, it's, oh, it's a whole build your portfolio. You don't have to have all kinds of stuff. You don't have to have big events. You don't have to have, you know, 400 people at your sessions initially. Um, but kind of just putting the work in and building a portfolio and getting to yourself, to getting to the point where when you have that conversation with someone in the elevator, you have enough to say, or you're confident enough to be able to say, I would love to have a follow up meeting, I would love to be at the table when you're having these conversations with people. But again, increasing your access more than just trying to get in. Uh, but I think that, that's really kind of my experience has been in terms of that actually having a pound pavement up until the point where people are asking for you. Um, definitely this year and last year, it's more of it. Like I've been doing it for seven years, right? And over the last seven years, we've engaged and been working with over 3,000 people, right? So, in the last, so a lot of stuff going on, but then it takes time for you to get that kickback, right? So it definitely doors open up with people. Hopefully, it's going to be a lot of work to get that. Any questions?